everyone and welcome to the 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called Taking Stock of Proven and New Educational Simulation Use Cases. Our speaker today is Kay McLennan. Please check out the website at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. Thank you, Sun. Good Kay morning. McClellan. I was going to give, give you a little bit of an intro too, Kay. Um, let, me, let me let you continue. Okay. <laughs> Kay is a professor of practice at the Tulane University School of Professional Advancement. Uh, she created the Tulane SOPA Metaverse and has been creating and using virtual world learning simulations in her online economics and business studies courses since 2008. Kay uses a student feedback uh, thing to continually refine and expand the educational simulations she creates for her for use in her e-courses. For more information on Kay's work, please see this uh, website, which I will post for you in local here as well. Just to make sure everybody's got it. And that's uh, sopametaverse.wp.tulane.edu. Well, this session is being live streamed and recorded. So if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send your tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC19. Welcome everyone, and let's begin the session. Okay. Thank you, Sun, and thank you to everyone who is an early bird riser today to attend this session. On the screen now, I've got the uh, bare bones agenda for what we're going to talk about. Um, I thought a review of the OpenSim educator affordances could be useful. Also, I wanted to detail some particulars about the educator learning simulation use cases that I have found to be proven. And when I say proven, I mean uh, learner feedback proven. Um, also, it's uh, an important development, or I should say multiple developments in OpenSim capabilities and options. And then I thought it might be worthwhile to take a look at what is the common denominators for effective learning simulations, and then close with uh, a discussion of what might be considered at least fixable, but nonetheless impediments to the wider educator use of OpenSim and also even VR and all virtual simulations. But before we get started, um, I wanted to call your attention to uh, the Mentimeter uh, poll that I have set up and I've just got two questions set up in this poll and the speakeasy HUD, I realized I corrected the slide this morning, but I didn't correct the text in the speakeasy HUD. I just added the right code uh, to the text chat, which is 839688. And there's just two simple questions. I, I thought it might be fun uh, towards the end to detail your findings. Um, I haven't integrated this uh, Menti poll into my presentation, but when I get to the end, I thought I'd uh, tell everybody um, uh, what the results were from the the, uh, the survey. And the first question is just asking you for your experience to find out what uh, where the audience is, and then I'll leave the second question towards the end. Um, looking first at the educator affordances in OpenSim, uh, I want to start with the bottom line first, which is that the most important affordance is how OpenSim can easily be used by academics or non-developers, that is, to create and test simulations. Um, and I'm going to repeat that. Um, uh, OpenSim didn't exactly turn out to be what we all thought it would be, where uh, Online classes and uh, online meetings would occur uh, with educators across universities, within universities, in classes. Um, in other words, the critical mass 
it, you know, still, at least in my classes, is about one in three uh, where I would like it to be 100 percent. But that doesn't mean that there still aren't affordances that we need to keep in mind and take advantage of. Um, so the first uh, affordance is uh, private grids, um, the ability to be completely FERPA compliant. Um, also, I can pre-create avatars for my students, pre-position avatars, pre-load their uh, content into their avatar. Um, uh, the grids can be self-hosted or low-cost hosted. I mean, the cost of an open sim uh, island or region or even larger grid is uh, ridiculously cheap these days. Um, and of course, the scalability, um, the ability to duplicate and replicate every aspect of a simulation. Um, there's an extensive array of free or creative commons content. Um, uh, for example, uh, there are uh, giveaways, educator giveaways that came from an early Flipgrid uh, 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 simulation uh, for on Expo Region 3, and you can see the coordinates on the screen now. There's also an educator commons in Wright Plaza. Um, there are script recipes um, in... Uh, uh, the OS grid, and you can see the coordinates um, uh, on the screen now. Um, I'm bringing my speakeasy up to be uh, in concert with what's on the screen. Um, turning next to the proven use cases for education simulations in OpenSim, um, in-world meetups and discussions are the mainstay of virtual learning. Um, also, students can even uh, collaborate in world on the creation of content or just stage meetings for group project discussions. Still, in contrast to the empty building malady characteristic of the early use of Second Life, where colleges and universities built realistic but empty campus buildings, um, there are uh, the sky's the limit options for other types of learning simulations. And again, I, I can't say this enough, we have only seen the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the types of learning simulations that can be easily staged and, most importantly, uh, learner tested in open sim. Um, case studies, role play, and even the use of virtual world sets to make 360 video is possible. Simulated experiences, including experiences that are too dangerous or costly to stage in the real world, can be created in the platform. Uh, on the screen now is my Prisoner's Dilemma scenario which is uh, an example of how students can learn in groups about the bias against cooperation in society. And there clearly is nothing uh, more effective than um, learning firsthand or uh, having a demonstration of uh, a, a particular concept or outcome. Um, content delivery through uh, displays, working slideshows, vocabulary flashcards, and more have proven highly valuable to students. And the types of things that I first put, put in simulations, like slideshows and vocabulary, sli uh, vocabulary flashcards, I, I will confess, I just put in as filler in the early days in OpenSim, and they have turned out to be the most highly rated uh, by my students. That is, students uh, clearly find uh, the immersive uh, capability um, of uh, viewing content and interacting with content in a virtual world to be uh, something that grabs their attention, and that's why it's valuable to students. Um, but beyond that, students can even test their knowledge with in-world quizzes that are easy uh, to create. Now, moving on to less effective use cases, uh, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't disclose what didn't work out for me. 
And uh, what didn't work out or was not valued by students were elaborate, long, uh, 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 you know, simulations. And on the screen now is my data detective game that takes up an entire island. It has extensive uh, tutorial stations, an entire city, and an extensive game scenario. And in some, uh, it turned out to be too time-consuming. Um, still, uh, once again, my ability to easily and inexpensively set up this extensive simulation that ultimately proved to be of little interest um, to students is really quite remarkable. Um, turning next to the new and emerging use cases, um, I believe we're at a turning point or an inflection point for OpenSim um, at this very conference. Uh, a year ago, uh, my Tulane colleagues and I detailed how we're using VMware virtualized viewers to provide students with access to the Firestorm viewer, even on a low-end computing device like an iPad or smartphone. And if you have an interest in this uh, uh, use of OpenSim, you can go back to the video of that presentation from 2008. Um, now we have access to a VR-ready viewer. Um, on the screen now are the virtualized viewer. And what you can see is I successfully tested the virtualized viewer on my iPhone and a 10-year-old uh, iPad. Um, uh, so our uh, VR-ready Firestorm viewer is something I've just started to experiment with. But er my early review is that it has a lot of promise. Um, also, uh, we um, have uh, access to SceneGate, a, a streamlined viewer that uh, one of my colleagues is going to be speaking about later today. And yesterday you heard about the fake VR Google Cardboard viewer. And when considering all of these new or soon to be available VR capabilities in OpenSim, it, it's going to be expansive and increase the array of content and pot potential users that could, in fact, uh, relaunch the platform uh, back to the hype cycle for 2020 or 2021. Um, also, using... Um, in-world content out of world is uh, a little used uh, option in OpenSim. That is, uh, users can, or educators can make custom graphic images, can make talking avatar head video clips. Uh, once again, uh, set up sets for 360 degree video and more. So returning for a minute to the Mentimeter poll, um, once again, uh, the coordinates are 83.96.88. And let me get to that. And of course, uh, my um, uh, text, uh, the speakeasy text is wrong. Um, and this time I'm just asking you what you think is the major limiting factor of virtual simulations. And again, when I get to the end, I'll uh, detail uh, the... Uh, findings or what you uh, what you are uh, finding in your work is the most limiting factor. Um, so with all the affordances and use cases I've detailed, um, uh, the next question is what is it about the different uh, use cases that have staying power that uh, is contributing to what is giving them their staying power? And in my view, the main reason for the staying power of the different simulations that I found are extremely useful to students is that students can easily use them. Students find them engaging. They find them uh, and they find that they contribute to their learning outcomes. So I ask them to rate the simulations on engagement, ease of use, and contribution to learning outcomes. So uh, and in terms of the staying power, that's that's it in a nutshell. It's their usefulness to uh, students. Now, of course, institutional culture is another factor 
Um, in the past, uh, predominantly on ground, chalk and talk faculty or institutions had less interest in virtual learning. But as more and more programs moved online, uh, the use of virtual learning simulations has become of interest. Yet, if a, the culture of a, an institution is focused on what's the latest development or the new shiny technology, proven affordances of platforms like Open Simulator could possibly be passed over. Um, okay. And of, yes. Quick note for you: a lot of us are running into problems with the mentee. It gets after you fill out the first slide, it gets to one that says to refresh, but it won't get past that. Okay. Let so. me. Uh, I um, oh, just, it just it just cleared up on mine. I don't know why. Okay, thank you, thank sure. you, son, for jumping in. Um, um, so again, uh, the main factor influencing the staying power of virtual simulations is listening to the findings uh, that I've collected with learners. Um, in turn, the first step for being able to ascertain which simulations are valued by learners is to the ability to easily develop and modify simulations in world or the main feature of open sim. Um, again, uh, I believe learner tested is the bottom line. So turning to the challenges of uh, mainstreaming the use of virtual simulations. Um, developing a more robust community of inquiry uh, remains top on my list. Uh, we had the SLED listserv uh, when educators between 2008 and 2010 were mostly in Second Life. Um, and then when Second Life ended the educator discount, a large group moved to open SIM. And we had a few different listservs that have since uh, dissipated. Um, some of us are on MeWe and in Facebook, but I, I would love to explore with colleagues, you know, uh, developing even more non-commercial uh, communities of inquiry. Um, um, viewers are not uh, LTI compliant for our learning management systems. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could just walk off the page uh, into a simulation from our uh, Canvas or Blackboard or a uh, desire to learn uh, learning management systems. Um, I'd like to see more up-to-date educational turnkey kits with uh, animated mesh, for example. Um, I, I I, I'm saying here overcoming the trow of disillusionment, but perhaps OpenSim has kind of fallen off the uh, hype curve. It would be nice if uh, VR capabilities um, catapult us back onto the trow of disillusionment. Um, I, we use Zoom at my um, uh, institution, and there was a layered application. I think it's called Zoot Up where um, it, you could use your Zoom platform to go into a virtual world. And it made me think that um, it would be nice if uh, we thought about layering applications. That was uh, talked about a little bit last yesterday uh, in um, uh, the uh, uh, discussion about HUDs and um, discourse, you know, layering different uses. Um, and of well, course- thanks, Jay. You, we're, we're gonna have to wrap up now because of our time. Um, Thank you. Thank you, son. Let me take a look and see uh, if anybody has a question to post in, in chat. Uh, I don't know if we have enough time, son, but it uh, looks... Well, what we can do is if, if you're willing to meet with them at your booth later, that might be the best way to do that. Or if they want to IM you with their questions, that would, that would be great. IM me sounds good. Uh, real okay. quick, our experience with virtual simulations, 24% in open sim, 76% multiple. And uh, the top factors limiting, it's almost a third and a third and a third. Equipment needed, use difficulty, and faculty setting up. So cost is uh, fell off the uh, scale. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you to the conference uh, facilitators. Well, thank you, Kay, for a terrific presentation. And as a reminder for our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And following this session, the next session begins at 7.30 a.m. in this same keynote region, and it's entitled Echo Voice for Open Simulator. 
Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions.